I must replenish my powers. Oh my goodness. Welcome back to the adventures of Edrudel the Summoner. I return now to this outpost. Oleg's trading outpost, yes. It has been some time since I've played, so let's refresh ourselves. That's right. Amiri learned about the bounty on the head of Tusk Gutter, a dire boar that's terrorizing the local populace. The stubborn barbarian demands we drop everything and go kill this beast right away. It doesn't seem to me like this is about the reward, but slaying the beast in single combat is very important to her for some reason. Let's do that. I respect her. But first, we need to rest. We've been fighting for a long time. Alright, let's rest. Svetlana Leviton says, Good day. I hope you're feeling alright after the battle. I can't thank you enough for what you've done. I definitely don't want to waste your time. But if you have a moment, I have a request. I found your ring, Svetlana. Kressel, the bandit woman who had it, tried to kill me and died in the fight. Svetlana sighs bitterly. She says, I suppose I should tell you the truth about her. Kressel wasn't her real name. Her real name was Irena. Before all this, she was the daughter of my mother and her second husband, uh, my half-sister. I can't help but feel like everything that happened to her was my fault. She always had a wildness to her. She'd wander the streets, hanging out with a bad crowd. Until the day she passed, Mother complained about Irena constantly. Back then, it was just cruel games and strange escapades. She never really hurt anyone back in Restov. Her father didn't live much longer than our mother, so I decided to try to help Irena. I brought her here, to the Stolen Lands, though Oleg was against it, and once here, she immediately fell under the Stag Lord's influence. She never needed to meet him. The stories and rumors from local hunters and bandits were enough to win her over. She would tell us how he was a real leader, unlike Restov's softies. Eventually, she ran away, only to return under a new name with a pack of thugs to collect taxes from us. What's worse, she participated in the torture and execution of prisoners alongside the Stag Lord's minions. Hmm, it sounds like she did eventually meet her. Svetlana continues. She says, and now, meeting such an end, I realize you did what you had to. Perhaps it's all for the best. But still, I wonder if everything could have turned out differently. Svetlana lifts her head. Thank you for returning my ring. I truly appreciate it. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'd like to be alone for a little while. Oh, you're welcome. I killed your half-sister. All in a day's work. <laughs> okay, so let's see if we can find that boar. Tristian. Tristian smiles at you. Greetings. How may this humble chosen of the great Serenre help you? What can you tell me about Serenre? Serenre is the goddess of temperance and patience. Solar flame goddess teaches us compassion for the weary and mercy to those who go astray. I hope I have satisfied your curiosity. I have heard enough of Serenre. If you ever wish to know more about the goddess, just ask. I should go. All right, let's leave. We are going to hunt for a giant boar. Okay, where is this giant boar? Meadows Crossing. The soggy remnants of a once well-built bridge crossing the Shrike River. The fate of the crossing and its creator, an engineer named Davik Nettle, is one of the dark secrets of the Stolen Lands. One day, the bridge was found destroyed, and Davik had gone missing under mysterious circumstances. Mm -hmm. Let's see if our journal says anything about this tusk gutter. It, says, it just says, terrorizing the area. Well, these are the lands I do intend to govern one day. So I should... Oh! <laughs> I was about to say, I should find it. And then I just so happened to mouse over the location. Tusk Gutter's Lair. All hunters in the green belt know the name Tusk Gutter, as well as the location of the giant boar chose for its lair. Let's go.
All characters are fatigued. All right, let's begin resting. Merciful doesn't mean spineless. In one hand, Saren Ray holds a healing light. In the other, a killing sword. I know you are good with your little sword. And you don't run away in a fight. But after a battle, you always have that face like you just swallowed a hedgehog. What's the point of fighting if you don't enjoy it? Mm. All right, we're gonna have to cross this ford. I can see my destination. All right here. Into the forest. I must replenish my powers. Oh my god. The only way this fatigue stuff makes sense is because I'm an old man. Hey, please ladies. Entristion. I must rest my old bones. I missed so many <laughs> crossbow shots. You're a kind person, Tristian. It must be hard for you to witness all the atrocities that go on around here. I draw strength from my goddess. If I begin to feel sad, I turn to Serenre in my prayers, and she gives me solace. <laughs> Tusk Gutter's Lair. We arrived. Oh, hello. Tusk Gutter, where are you? Mary says, so, here we are. The monster is here. And now, I'll tear him apart. Yes, just watch me. Are you scared? What? Who? Me? Amiri blushes, then pales, then bursts out laughing. Ah, you're funny. Am I scared of some pork chop? She falls silent with a smile, shaking her head. She clears her throat. There's a custom where I'm from. A boy kills a monster in front of the elders to prove he's a man. Oh. The barbarian clears her throat in hesitation. In our tribe, girls don't get no initiation at all. So I arranged my trial myself. Like in the song about Kagul the orphan. I downed a cave line in single combat. Here, see? The scars I got in that battle. And do you know what my elders did after I threw the lion skin at their feet? Hey, they invoked some formality and declared your initiation invalid. I wish. They laughed in my face. They said I scratched my belly myself and hired some man to kill the lion for me in trade for... Ugh. They agreed my initiation, of course. They had no choice, but... Amiri's voice wavers in anger, and she spits on the ground. Must you really slay him in single combat? It'll take our whole party to bring this Tuskutter down. From a distance, Amiri examines Tuskutter's muscular body and sharp tusks. Bah, you think I can't butcher a pig myself? Uh, though, if the elders saw the beast was about to kill the boy, they would help him. There's no shame in that. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I'm just saying, now, you stand and watch me gutting the beast. Um, let's see. <laughs> I've never heard anything more stupid, no. I see. Come on, to battle. She says, Gorm, watch me. And with the battle cry, the barbarian charges the boar. I'm going alone, got it? I understand. Good luck, and I don't care if you die. Okay, I care. I think Edredel would care if she died. He's invested in these people now, even if he is callous and evil. Um, so we are going to let her attack him alone, right? Amiri, it's all you. Oh, he's not too big at all. Although apparently he's killed a lot of things. 
Is this really Tuskutter? He seems kind of small. Okay, let's start with no rage. Miss. Oh my goodness. Tear them apart. Nice. They go down. She's halfway dead. Another miss. Oh no. This time we'll give her barbarian rage. Ooh, good hit. It's pretty even now. Bring it! Tear them apart! Ooh, swing and a miss. You got this, Amiri. I know we can help her, but I just want to see if she can do it alone. She said, I'm wounded. Come finish it off. You got it. The party leaps into action. We've got your back. They go down! Oh, she could die. This won't kill me. Hang in there. All right, Edredel, it's up to you. Magic missile. We've hit him. But to no great effect, I am now deeply concerned for my ally's health. Aha! Heal thyself. Whew, good thing we did it. I'm going to circle around Amiri. And we're going to cheer for her. She now has the upper hand. Lindsay's like, you got this, Amiri. Yeah. And she starts singing a song annoyingly. Serves you right. Oh my goodness! He finally hit the broadside of a barn. All right, Amiri, it's all you. Ah! Nicely done. Uh. Oh no, it's getting close. Come on, Amiri. You can do it. Uh. Oh, it's so close now. I'm... <coughs> Oh, right. Tristan came in handy. Okay, Amiri, it's all you. Yeah! Oh my goodness, he, he's got like one HP left. Tristan, can you heal us? Well done. Thank goodness you're here. You know, I'm reminded of uh, that Teddy Roosevelt story. The story of uh, where the teddy bear got its name. It does feel a bit cruel that we're all just healing her and watching <laughs> while she sticks this pig. There's a story of uh, Teddy Roosevelt. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, he was out in the woods and um, he wanted to hunt for sport and he saw this bear tied to a, or chained to a tree or something and he couldn't bring himself to kill it because it wasn't uh, in good sport. Okay, I think Edredel would have enough by this time. Uh, screw this. The hell? Oh, is he dead or what? Maybe she has to do the finishing blow. <laughs> if she can. Oh my goodness. Damn, that pig is tough. You're welcome. Breathing heavily, Amiri stands over the corpse of the fallen monster. See me in action? I almost chopped its head off. Yes, a real, uh, epic battle, <laughs> just like the sagas. I, I won't even have to embellish it for the book. Uh, did we watch the same battle? I d never mind. Good job, Amiri. She says, that's it, trial done. Now, no one dares say Amiri is weak. She grins and thrusts her chest out. Yes, we're all very impressed by you. You are a valiant warrior. Were there truly fools who doubted your strength? Some did, you know. I spit on them. No one will dare bark at me now. Still, why do you want to kill this monster? You passed this test back when you were with your tribe, didn't you? Amiri's face reddens. Well, not just pups must pass this test. If a man is newcomer to a tribe, he must bring a monster's hide. Proves he's not weak. Her voice trails off, then falls silent. Are you embarrassed? 
I didn't think you were capable of that. I am honored you consider me a part of your new tribe. You're a strong and valiant warrior. I don't like this whole tribe idea. I only helped you. You owe me nothing. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, give her a bit of a ribbing. Are you embarrassed? Mary growls low in her throat. I don't get embarrassed. I'm a warrior. She grunts. Still, I owe you thanks. You have a true chief's heart. You know what? If we meet another monster like this, I'll kill it too. Not for a test, just uh, just that nobody would ever dare say Amiri isn't a warrior. Hey, all right. There's a man's corpse over here. Want to find traps. Hmm. Great. Well, now that that camping trip is over. So, a bitter rival, riverbed nightmare. Our leader can't get any rest at night, and it's not due to the bed bugs in his bedroll. As soon as he closes his eyes, a nightmare begins tormenting him. A bloated, drowned corpse repeating the same words over and over. Shrike River. We should go there and discover the source of these terrible dreams. Alright. And we have Tartuccio. He's somewhere out in the wild. Our priest friends Jod and Tristan recommend we wait until the fog clears away. And we'll finally be ready to set off for the Staglord's Fortress. Yeah, when is that going to be? Jamandi Eldori said that we have no more than three months to conquer the Stolen Lands. It sounds like more than enough, but we should still be mindful of the passing time. Yeah, I don't know if we have enough time, honestly. I'm a bit concerned. Ooh, honey. Why not? Honey in my tummy is very yummy. I'm going to look around a little tiny bit. There's a bunny. Focus on the goal. Okay, so... Now what? I guess we should just go exploring, right? Perhaps? What's this? Soggy uh, remnants of a once well-built bridge crossing the Shrike River. Why does it want us to go there? That's the only glowing one I see. Through the fog? Or go over here? Why does it want us to go to Nettles Crossing? Maybe it has to do with this riverbed nightmare thing. I must replenish my powers! Good lord, Edru Dell. I wonder, do mammoth lords have their own writing system? They must have much to tell. The legends of my people are passed from generation to generation. If someone doesn't get into a legend, then he's a weakling, and there's nothing to talk about. Mm. Don't worry, I think you'll be part of mine. Very, very egotistical thing to say. What is this? Ruins of an old temple. The surviving walls are covered with exquisite mosaics. Point of interest for tourists and explorers. Um, let's wait to go there after we're done with this. Random encounter. Fight! Follow me, everyone. I will guide. Oh my goodness, those are horrible. What are those? Spitting giant centipede. Oh my goodness. Disturbing. All right, first things first. Lindsay, inspire courage in us. Play my favorite song. And then she'll go over here and shoot this one, or not. Adriel is going to spread out. And then do, you guessed it, his favorite move, Acid Splash. I can't wait until he can actually summon things. I guess he's summoning the acid or something, I don't know. Oh, we actually hit him. We are getting better at that. All right, Tristan, let's see. Blessing of the Faith long. Repent! And then he'll get into position. I'm gonna have her start out raging. Nice. All right, let's see if we can charge this one next time. Ouch. You deserve it. Good shot, Lindsay. My turn. How about 80 acid dart? Yes. <laughs> it's just a variant of the same move. Hooray. Go team! This way. Old Sycamore. Hmm. 
All your characters are fatigued. Darn. Some food would be nice. <laughs> and some booze. When I get to a tavern, I'll lock myself inside and won't come out until all the barrels are empty. Another random encounter. Let's try to avoid this one. Okay. Just to save some time, but he's still on the board. I love this overland map. All right, let's rest again. I miss a good fight. I want to hit somebody so hard my fists are itching. Oh my goodness. Edrudel the Summoner suddenly woke inside the house. Dogs were howling fiercely, not far away. It smelled like burning. The wooden walls were steaming hot, and smoke was wreathing beneath the low ceiling. He jumped out of the window. Kicking out the window, Edrudel the Summoner jumped out into the darkness. An arrow hit his shoulder, and he heard laughter and shouts of triumph. He surged forward the rope bridge. Reaching the middle of the river, Edredel the Summoner cast a glance back and noticed that a young man wearing an antlered helm cut one of the ropes with an axe. The bridge began to collapse as its ropes twisted and snapped. Edredel the Summoner's skin felt cold. He heard the murmur of the water and the soft lapping of waves. After opening his eyes, he saw a rocky river bottom and a bloated body, tangled in green water weeds. The drowned man's empty gaze was fixed upon Edredel the Summoner. The drowned man's mouth opened slowly, and a hoarse whisper said, Shrike River, Edredel the Summoner. At this moment, Edredel the Summoner finally woke. Drenched in sweat, he told us what he'd seen in the dream. Lindsay's a good artist. Assuming she sketched that. Nettles Crossing. Do you want to enter this location? Yes. Oh my goodness, it's raining. Hopefully there's no lightning. Alright, what is this place? Ruins. The small house burnt down a dozen years ago. Alright. Alright. Knowledge is the key to victory. Is that a zombie? Davik Nettle. The corpse's face is bloated from being so long in the water. The stench from its toothless mouth is so foul that your eyes begin to water. The hand, clenching a sinister-looking spear, is covered with scabs. Oh my goodness, is this the man from my dream? Suddenly, you feel faint, as if a cold, wet hand is placed heavy upon your head. Wet hair sticks to skin, and trickles of icy cold water run down your face and shirt. A hoarse whisper rises inside your head. There you are. I sense evil, but not evil committed by this poor soul. No, he arose on account of some evil done to him. Uh, so it was you who sent me those nightmares. Gurgling, deep-chested laughter pierces your skull, clouding your vision and flooding your ears. All else becomes muffled, as if you are trapped underwater. You shake your head to cast off the apparition. What do you want from me? No one dares to trespass inside my head. Die, monster! <laughs> yeah, what do you want? He's, he'd be interested in learning. You see a vision of a man wearing an antlered helm. You hear a muffled groan, and the helm drops to the ground with a loud thud. Your hands are covered with hot blood. Too much blood. Death to the stag lord. Don't you hate it when someone asks you to do something you were going to do anyway? It makes me want to do nothing just to spite them. I refuse to help you on principle. <laughs> that is just so stupid. Yeah, I already plan to do that. The drowned man who'd been sitting motionless nods his head. Come later. Take the spear. Okay, we have to kill the Staglord. 
And I guess the spear is going to be our reward. Hopefully the fog clears now. All right, so let's go all the way back. Don't get me wrong. Knowing how to forgive is as important as knowing how to fight. Without mercy for the defeated, the victor wins no glory. What do you know about glory? The one who defeats everyone else is the most glorious. And the best mercy is killing fast without suffering. Valerie, didn't you like stories, even as a child? I can't believe that. All children like stories. In case you haven't noticed, I'm not a child anymore. Maybe you should grow up at last, too. Oh no. A random encounter. Who are these guys? Technic League's Mage. A group of well-armed fighters approaches. One of them raises their voice, pointing at you. Hey you, stop right there. Kalanar, look at this one. Will he do? The group's leader lays her cold and watchful eyes upon you. This one? I suppose, but I don't like his snout. She studies your companions, carefully but nonchalantly, as if examining goods at the market. Listen, you tramps. We are from the Technic League. What is the Technic League? The Technic League is a group of arcanists and other lore seekers obsessed with unlocking the mysteries of the Silver Mount, an ancient alien artifact that crashed long ago near the Numerian capital of Starfall. Through their indirect control over the nation's ruler, the Black Sovereign Kevath Kul, the Technic League also has strong influences over the laws, politics, and economy of Numeria. That's pretty cool. I think uh, Edredel might actually join them, or at least associate with them. She says, our slave died, and we need a replacement. One of you will be coming with us. The rest of you are free to go. I advise against resistance. It would be a quick trick to kill every one of you. Choose now the one that you will give. I'll make you eat your own entrails. That's our evil option. What is the Technic League? She says, one very serious organization from Numeria. People with whom you'd better not start a fight. And who you better not bother with foolish questions. We can't handle this. There's too many of them. What are we going to do? Uh, that's no talk for a leader. No negotiations with slavers. Uh, you sure can talk. So they're all attacks. So I'll say, I'll make you eat your own entrails. I'll make you eat your own entrails. He says, big mistake. You've performed a chaotic evil action. No! She's adjourned! Kill the wizard. Okay, Blessing of the Faith, Long. On Edredel. And then go over here, split up. I don't know what they can do. All right, it's Edredel's turn. He is going to do Mage Armor. And he will also split up. Oh no, my back is turned. Oh, but he still missed, good. People miss more than they hit. I guess that's maybe realistic. But it doesn't make for an exciting fight. Sing us a song, Lindsay. Charge! Good hit. Cause fear, oh no. Oh my goodness. You've got to kill that mage. Do not hold her. He's almost dead. Well done. As for Tristan, he should do Shield of Faith. Alright, Edredel's turn. He's gonna do Burning Hands. Sweet. We're doing much better than I thought. Ow! Yes, yes. 
Oh, she summoned a monster. Or another wolf. Oh no, she's afraid. She's bringing away her inspiration. Not good. I'm gonna do barbarian rage on Amiri. Good hit. Onward. Nice. The mage is dead. One anyway. I assume Kalana. Yeah, I think she summoned the other one, right? Okay, Tristan. Heal us. Thank you, my boy. Okay, I'm going to do Acid Splash. Oh, but I missed. Oh, no. And they attacked me because I cast a spell right next to them. Oh, no. She keeps summoning monsters. We've got to kill her fast. I'm on the floor. Lindsay. Must kill wizard. Well, one less wolf. Stay behind me. You've crossed paths with the Technic League. It shall be your undoing. Oh no, she teleported away. We now have enemies. She teleported away, but so too did her wolves. I'm gonna try to rush this one. Well done. One more. In the back. How does it feel? Bring it! <laughs> Good lord. Maybe Amiri closes her eyes when she swings. A fine kill, Tristan. Oh my lord. Never stop learning. The stolen lands are full of danger. And not just the usual ones, like bandits or monsters. Our neighboring countries are happy to make trouble for us too. This time, we've got some guests in New from Numeria. A group of Technic League mages. This sinister, powerful organization dabbles in various shady businesses. Not the least of which is the slave trade. But why did they come here? Hmm, indeed. If I do ever manage to become king of this land... I need to concentrate. It seems I'm going to have enemies from afar. The insidious henchmen of the ominous Technic League have disappeared into the thick wilderness of the mysterious stolen lands. But not for long. Soon we'd be upon them. First, though, we'd have to pick up their trail. To do that, we... Ooh, Arcana, try to understand... Based on what we've seen, what kind of spell Kalana used to get away, and where it could bring her. Knowledge World, trying to find anyone who could have seen these despicable people. Lore Nature, without searching for other ways to simplify our work, we followed the trail of the Technic League. I don't know why, but I think even though we have a specialization in Arcana, for some reason, I have a feeling that Edredel would um, lean on his experience and his worldliness. He's well-traveled, and uh, I think maybe he leans on the fact that he's older than people a bit too much. Sadly, the wild woods of the Stolen Lands are not like the city streets where you can talk to passers-by, go to the tavern, question the drunkards. That's not what I meant. I meant uh, my memory or whatever. In the whole area, we only met a single mushroom gatherer who seems suspicious that we were armed turned around and ran. No one was going to help us, so we... Yeah, Arcana. Tried to understand, based on what we've seen, what kind of spell Kalana used to get away, and where it could bring her. Unfortunately, a spell is such an elusive thing, it can hardly be called a thing at all. No matter how hard we thought, we still had no idea what exactly she used. We had to find another way. We, I guess nature... Without searching for other ways to simplify our work, we followed the trail of the Technic League. Succeeded at Lore Nature Check. The henchmen of the ominous Technic League are truly insidious, and the Stolen Lands a mysterious thicket. But true heroes think nothing of such things. We easily picked up the trail of those scoundrels and soon found their camp. Oh, that was easy? <laughs> Seems like the least likely. Okay, whatever. Maybe they were nearby. Ooh, Tuskwater. I like that. 
Okay, where's the camp? Where? Oh. Oh my goodness. How did we find it so quickly without traveling there? That's curious. You chose a path of a warrior, and now your sword is always wet with blood. What, do you like killing? War is no less honorable a trade than any others. It's definitely not worse than drawing or arranging letters into lines. As for my enemies, I'm not the one who puts weapons in their hands. Like me, they've chosen their own path. Okay, we're gonna go this way. All the way around. Tristan, why are you staring at me like that? Do I have an ink stain on my cheek again? Um, yes, actually. But it wasn't about that. I just like to watch you write. You're so focused. As if you're trying to put a part of yourself down on the pages. Well, that's good. I'm glad they like each other. Hey, book kid. Want to hear a story about hunting a saber-toothed owlbear? That was a good hunt. A saber-toothed owlbear? <laughs> but, Amiri, owlbears don't have teeth. They have beaks. Hello. We found her yeah! dance. All right. <laughs> oh no, they have prisoners. Ah, tea. Go. Ah. Tear them apart. I'm down. <laughs> Repent. Good lord, it just seems so evil to stab an enemy when they're down. And yet here I am, doing just that. They go down! Hmm. Defeat, is that Kalana? I shall end this suffering. Oh, there she comes, or at least reinforce. Oh, here she is, okay. All right, let me do... Acid dart. In the face. Let's um, deal with this mage. Do not hold her. Tear them apart. Stay behind me! You can do it, Tristan. Ooh, nice. Is he the last one? I will take that as a yes. Alana drops her weapon and raises her hands, which are covered in blood. She says, Mercy! Don't kill me. Regengar, the half-orc, bears his fangs. That is how you talk now, wretch. I've wanted to do this for so long. He casts a spell on his outstretched palm, and sparks begin dancing upon it. Octavia, the half-elf, puts her hand on his shoulder. Regengar, come now, let her go. It's one thing to kill her in battle, but executing her unarmed... Why spoil the joy of being free? Octavia, are you out of your mind? This filth is from the Technic League. By her own hand, she enchained us. And do you want to forgive her? Do you think she'll thank you? Ha! She'll just gather another band and try to catch us again. Edredel says, As the future lawful ruler of these lands, I want to practice carrying out public executions. Mm, yes. The half-orc shrugs. Fine, fine. The victor's always right. You've performed a lawful evil action.
Octavia says, I didn't mean to spoil the victory, but on the other hand, she did deserve it. Regengar says, Ha ha, we're free. I can't believe it. Free as the birds in the sky. Phew, ha ha ha. Regengar holds Octavia tight, and she laughs slightly and kisses him on the lips. Thank you. You've no idea how long we've tried to escape the Technic League. This is a miracle. How did you get captured by Kalanhar? I've lost count of how many times we've tried to escape. I can't name all the things we've tried, but we were caught every time. And then, they just take us somewhere else. I don't know who would want to buy us, but imagine how happy we were when we learned they were taking us to the River Kingdoms, where slavery is forbidden. Regengar says, Indeed. We tried so many times to escape. Yet in the end, the League itself brought us to the Free Lands, under heavy guard, I'll grant you. If it wasn't for you, who knows where we'd go next? Are you good fighters? Do you want to join me? Of course. Octavia, what do you say? I would be happy to join you. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know they would actually do that. Hmm. I'll take the half-orc. I thought they were going to be random NPCs. All right. A uh, Technic League slave. Freedom! Freedom! Yes, be free for now. All right, we've wasted enough time. Let's get on with it. The old oak, great old tree, dominates this area, rising from the remains of the waterlogged pine forest. Uh, good to know, but we are kind of in a hurry. You're such a prude, but I know deep down you're dreaming of spending a night with me. I'd be happy to spend a night alone with you, burying your corpse somewhere deep in the woods. Oh my word. Ancient obelisk. Curious? I must replenish my powers. Good lord. Listen, Lindsay. Can you write a story about me? One where I'm bursting into a crowd of enemies, lopping off their heads, and then kicking their corpses and laughing like a madman. What kind of story is that? That's your biographer's job. There is someone on the road. Get ready. Having reached the edge of the milky white blanket, we stopped. I've never seen a denser, thicker fog in all my life. Stretching my hand forward, I could hardly see the outline of my fingers. And if my arms were as long as my companions, I don't think I'd even see my elbows. We exchanged hesitant looks. It would be impossible to find one's way through this haze. Detect magic. One of us used magic to analyze the fog. It was clear the gloom was of unnatural origin, but who or what could have spawned such a thing? Fortune favors the brave. Having formed a single line with our hands on each other's shoulders, we moved forward carefully. Soon the air became so damp it was hard to breathe. What? And we were soaking wet in the blink of an eye. This is some weird fog. With each step, our eyes told us less and less, until finally, we were completely blind. It was positively impossible to continue in this way. After a roll call, having made sure all of us were in place, we tried to turn around and walk in the opposite direction. Alas, we may as well have had our eyes closed. Stumbling and cursing anything and everything, we strayed for half the day. It was only by sheer luck that we managed to come clear of that place, and exactly in the spot we started out from. Tired, wet, and hungry, 
we swore that there was nothing that would make us walk back into that haze. Okay, so we have to do something before we can go there. Darn it. And that is where I will stop for today. Thank you all for watching. We'll return to Edredel the Summoner's Adventures very soon indeed. Until then, see you next time.